But I want to read one verse to you for just a moment, and it's from chapter 3 of Hebrews, and it's verse 1. And it simply says this. You didn't worry about looking it up. It simply says this. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Three little thoughts from that verse. Wherefore, holy brethren. First of all, holy brethren speaks of our character. Whenever Jesus Christ touches a life, whenever Jesus Christ saves a soul, he makes that soul over anew. The Bible speaks of being regenerated. The Bible speaks of being born again. And the holiness of God comes by his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to dwell within that life. And every single one of us in this room this evening, there was a time in our experience when holiness was the furthest thing from our hearts or the furthest thing from our minds. But if you're saved in here tonight, you're one of the holy brethren or one of the holy sisters for that matter. But that's what Christ has done. God is holy. Christ has made us holy. Bless his holy name. And you know, we will be simply asking those in the congregation tonight, dear one, have you had that transformation? Is there holiness in your life tonight? Because Jesus Christ has dealt with your sin. And because Jesus Christ has drawn you to himself. And because Jesus Christ lives in you by the power of his Holy Spirit. And so we see our character. Listen to the verse again. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. There we see our calling. Our calling. Our character is holy. Our calling, praise God, is heavenly. Partakers of the heavenly calling. Thank God tonight if we are saved, we're on our way to a, a new destination. Amen. You know, I love, I love the title, and I've mentioned it before, I love the title of that film that was made years ago. We're going back to the future. Praise God. What a glory that is. We're going back to be with him for all of eternity because of what he has done for us. He has laid his hand upon our lives. He died for us at the cross, but he laid his hand upon our lives, and he has called us heavenward. He has called us unto himself. He wants us to be with him for all of eternity. Our heavenly calling, reconciled to him through the blood that he has shed, through the mercy that he has extended, and through the grace that he has supplied, reconciled to him for all of eternity. Our character is holy. Our calling is heavenly. Let me finish the verse. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. We see our character, we see our calling, and now the apostle places before us, as if the apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, I personally feel he probably did, but that's neither here nor there. But the final thought in the verse is, he says, we see our character, holy character. We see our calling, heavenly calling. Now here's our consider consideration. Let's consider Jesus Christ. What a subject that is. Bible says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds because you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Consider him our consideration. You see, folks, tonight, praise God, Jesus Christ is our example. If we are saved this evening, we look to him. He's our apostle, our great high priest, the high priest of our profession. He's our apostle. He's, praise God, our friend. He's our savior. And he's the one who never lets us down. He's the one who never fails us. And he's the one who is always there, no matter what happens. And he's our example. And if we're saved tonight, that's the way we are to be. An example to others. That we might be there for them. 
that we might extend that friendship, that we might extend that mercy, that we might speak of this great Savior who loved them and gave himself for them as well. Our consideration, Jesus Christ. You know, we consider him because tonight in this gospel service, we think of the place called Calvary, don't we? The cross, the cross. And through the cross, salvation is offered. And through the cross, forgiveness of sins can be obtained. And through the cross, every single thing that we will ever have need of, whether it be in time or whether it be in eternity, everything is laid before us and made available because he laid down his life, because he shed his blood, and because he thought of you and he thought of me above all. Consider Jesus Christ. And I'm asking you, I'm finished, but I'm asking you this evening, have you considered Jesus Christ? Whenever you look at Calvary, by faith, you think of what that must have been like, and no one really knows what it must have been like. But we read about the agony, and we read about the pain. We read about the shame. We read about the brutality. We read about the rejection. We read about all that he suffered as he went to that cross. And I'm asking you tonight, have you ever considered the fact, dear one, that he did that just for you? Just for you. And he's the king. He's the son of the living God. He's Lord over absolutely everything. Lord of all, in time and in eternity. And yet, as Ricky read to us this evening, lo in the midst of the throne, one like unto a lamb that had been slain. Do you know why he looks like a lamb that had been slain? Because, dear one, that was the penalty for your sin. Slain for your sin. And John there on the Isle of Patmos gets that glimpse into eternity. And there's this glorious Savior, the Son of God, as we've said, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And in the midst of the throne, he looks like a lamb that has been slain because he has borne the punishment for your sin and for mine. And so the verse says, consider him. Can I ask you tonight, what is your character? Has he made you holy? Can I ask you tonight about your calling? Have you sensed that heavenly call? Can I ask you tonight, have you ever really considered the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he extends that invitation to you and to me. And he says, come on, come. Let me forgive your sin. Let me touch your life in a way that you can't possibly imagine. Let me draw near and be that friend. Let me draw near and be that savior who will walk with you every step of the way. I am the one who will take you by the hand and lead you right across when that time comes to be with him in all of eternity. And we're asking you tonight, right now, to consider this wonderful Savior. Remember Ricky? Remember George in prayer very, very much. But they're going in obedience to the Lord to enable others on other shores to hear the gospel, to hear the word of God read and proclaimed in their ears. Do you know what someone has said many years ago? Someone said many years ago, no one in the world should have the privilege 
of hearing the gospel twice whenever someone else in the world maybe hasn't heard it at all. Dear one, how many times perhaps have you heard the gospel? And tonight, maybe you're still in sin and you don't know him as Lord and Savior. Again, let me finish tonight by saying he should be your consideration. And we ask you to put your faith and your trust in him and to do it right now. Let's just pray for a moment and we'll sing our closing hymn together. Blessed God. Blessed God. Blessed Savior. Lord, you know every single heart that's bowed before you. Holy Spirit, just move, Lord, upon our lives right now. Lord, for so many here tonight, as we have just been thinking, Lord, we have characters that are holy because of Christ. We have a calling that is heavenward because of Christ. And Lord, there was a time in our experience whenever you made us consider Christ. Lord, if there's anyone here tonight and that's not their experience, we ask it right now, Holy Spirit. You will enable them to consider Christ in a meaningful way. Perhaps, Lord, a way they've never considered him before. We pray that you will reveal Jesus to hearts. And we ask, Lord, that you will move upon every single life that's bowed before you now. And so we thank you tonight. Thank you for your love, Lord, your goodness, your mercy, this great salvation. Lord, may someone find that salvation and be saved this evening because we commit it all to you in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen.